uh, today's topic is going to be on bioavailability, in particular, bioavailability of a drug. Now, bioavailability is defined as the fraction of the drug reaching the systemic circulation in the unchanged form. Now, there are two keywords here, systemic circulation and unchanged form. Now, no matter how you give the drug, it could be subcutaneous, intramuscular or oral, ultimately, they'll have to get to the veins before they can reach the heart and ultimately the systemic circulation. Now, all the drug will not reach the systemic circulation. A part of it might not get absorbed at all. For example, in the oral route, a part of the drug might just come out through the feces. Or while doing so, uh, a part of the drug might get metabolized and it might not come into the systemic circulation at all. Now, the reason why we are bothered about the drug reaching the systemic circulation is that in most cases, the drug that reaches the systemic circulation is going to be directly proportional to the amount of drug that the target organ will experience. And the proportion of the drug that reaches the target organ is going to be proportional to the clinical effect that the drug can produce. And since we are bothered about the clinical effect, we need to know what is the bioavailability of the drug. Will all the drug that I give reach the clinical, uh, will cause clinical effect or will it not? Only a part of it will eventually come to the target organ. Now, since the intravenous route directly pushes the drug into the vein, we consider the bioavailability of the intravenous route to be 100%. Now, this knowledge is very important because knowing this, we can calculate the dose for other routes. For example, if I know that 100 milligrams of a drug is effective when given intravenously, and I know that the oral bioavailability of that particular drug is 80%, then I could come up with the oral dose to be calculated as 125 milligrams. Now, how did I do that? It's quite simple. You, If you want to calculate the dose, you divide the intravenous dose because that has the highest bioavailability divided by the bioavailability of whatever route you want to measure. In this case, 80%, 0 0.8, 100 divided by 0 0.8, that's 125 milligrams. So similarly, you can calculate the dose for other routes as well if you want to give the drug by, other, uh, by any other route. Now, the bioavailability is usually represented as F in uh, equations. Uh, don't get confused by that. Uh, bioavailability is often represented either as a percentage or it could be written as a fraction. Okay, either way it's the same. If it's a fraction, it should uh, be somewhere between 0 and 1. If it's a percentage, it's going to be between 0 and 100%. Okay, and for intravenous route, we just said that it's going to be at 100%. Now, how do we calculate this bioavailability? Now, for that, we need to know what is known as a concentration time plot. So, we plot the concentrations on the x-axis, sorry, uh, the concentration on the y-axis and time on the x-axis. And if you try to measure the concentration after you administer a particular drug in a particular route, you might get a curve something like this uh, for the intravenous route. I purposefully made the curve more solid to represent that area under the curve. So the shaded area represents the area under the curve. Now, the reason for that is the area under the curve is kind of proportional to the bioavailability of the drug. So if you kind of integrate the concentration at every point of time, or the entire time the drug stays within the body, you kind of have an idea as to how much drug would have got into the body. Now, similarly, you can make a, a curve for other routes as well. Let's say we have another curve and this red one is for the oral route and since we said area under the curve is proportional to the bioavailability and we know for a fact that the intravenous route has the maximum bioavailability possible that's at 100 percent we can calculate the bioavailability for any other route in this case oral route by just dividing the area under the curves so bioavailability is the area under the curve of the route in this case oral divided by the area under the curve of the IV route. Because the area under the curve of the IV route is the maximum you can have, it kind of tells you what fraction does the other routes, you know, uh, let the, you know, absorb the drug or, uh, you know, what is the bioavailability is. I hope you understood this. The bioavailability is the fraction 
of the area under the curve compared with the area under the curve of an intravenous route because intravenous route has the maximum bioavailability that is possible. You can use this for any other routes as well. Now, you might know that a particular drug might be sold by different companies and one of those companies might be the first company to uh, manufacture and uh, distribute the drug or sell the drug. Now, ultimately, after some time passes, other companies will start producing the drug and when the uh, FDA or other uh, uh, authorities who want to, you know, make sure that the other companies are complying or ha uh, their drug to compare the effects of the other drugs, they calculate the bioavailability of all the drugs and see if they match. Okay, and that is what is called as bioequivalence. Two drugs are said to be bioequivalence when their bioavailabilities are matching. So you don't have to kind of test the drug that is produced by company B and company C again. You just have to make sure that their bioavailability is the same as company A's because they are all the same drug. They are just different companies producing the same drugs under different trade names. So that's a little bit of what you need to know about bioavailability. Uh, hope to see you in the next video.